Hi there, and welcome to your very first flip lesson. So today we're gonna to go over lesson 1.6, which is all about polygons. And I know that you guys are familiar with some of the polygons here, like a square, a pentagon, a triangle, and so on and so forth. We are now going to learn how to classify these polygons. So first, what is a polygon? By definition, a polygon is a closed two-dimensional so that means it's a plane. Remember, we learned earlier this week that a plane is two dimensions. So a two-dimensional shape made up of three or more straight line segments. And that's what's important here is that it's a straight line segment. And they are connected end to end to end. And that just means that they're connected at their endpoints. Remember, line segments are made up of a line that has two endpoints. So a polygon is first formed by three or more sides, so three or more line segments, which are called sides, and each side intersects exactly two other sides, one at each endpoint. So no sides are collinear, they don't have intersections with other sides except for at their endpoints. So over here we've got a couple of different polygons drawn. So this section right here, and I'll go ahead and circle that. These are different types of polygons. They look a little bit funny, but these are all considered to be polygons. They fit this definition. So they have three or more line segments. Each of these have three or more line segments. And each of those line segments are connected to other line segments only at their endpoints. Whereas this group over here, these are not polygons. So for example, this circle is not a polygon. It's not made up of straight line segments. And remember, our definition said that it had to be straight. So this is not a straight line segment. So it's not a polygon. Same with this kind of crescent shaped. These are curved lines. So anytime you see a curved line in here, it's not a polygon. And then this particular one does not connect all of the endpoints. This endpoint is not connected with this endpoint here. So because there's a space, it's not a polygon. Okay, now that we know what polygons are, let's go ahead and move on. So now we're gonna identify different parts of a polygon. So first, we've got what's called a vertex. A vertex is where the endpoints intersect. So right here, we've got two segments that intersect at this point, this is a vertex. This particular polygon has one, two, three, four, five vertices. And vertices is the plural of vertex. So it has five different vertices. In between each vertex is a side. Okay. So now we're going to also learn about different types of polygons. So a polygon is considered to be convex if all of the interior angles, and when we're talking about the interior angles, we're talking about these angles right here that are inside the polygon. This would be an interior angle. So if all of the interior angles are less than 180 degrees, then it's convex. So we can see here, all of these interior angles are less than 180 degrees. So this is a po convex polygon. So this polygon is a concave polygon because we have at least one angle that is bigger than 180 degrees. And we can see that this angle right here is larger than 180 degrees. So basically, if the polygon indents into itself, see how this kind of goes in, indents into the inside of it, then it's going to be a concave polygon. Okay, let's move on to the next slide here. So now we're going to talk about the different types of polygons that exist. And they're classified by their number of sides. And I know that you guys have seen this before. So ones that you're probably very familiar with is a three-sided polygon is a triangle. A four-sided polygon is a quadrilateral. A lot of times we know it as a rectangle or a square, 
but in general, if it has four sides, that's considered to be a quadrilateral. A five-sided polygon is a pentagon, and so on and so forth. So I would pause this slide right here, pause the video, write these down. You're going to want to memorize these. You need to know the different types of polygons that ex exist according to their number of sides. So the different names of each of the polygons that correspond to the number of sides. Okay, so hopefully now you have written those down into your notes. Let's move on to the next slide. So we're going to now work on additional names for a polygon. So if we have an equilateral polygon, that means that all of its sides are congruent. So we've got a quadrilateral. It is a four-sided figure here, quadrilateral A, B, C, D. It is equilateral because we can see that each of the four sides are marked as congruent. So this means that segment AD is congruent to segment DC, which is also congruent to segment CB, which is also congruent to segment AB. All of its sides, all four sides are congruent to each other, so therefore it is equilateral. A polygon is considered to be equal angular if all of the angles are congruent. So here we've got all four angles marked as being congruent. So because these four angles are all marked congruent, we know that it is equal angular. Lastly, if a polygon is convex and it's both equilateral and equal angular, then it's considered to be a regular polygon. So that means that all of these sides right here would be marked as congruent. And we already see that in our shape here, we've got all of our angles are marked congruent. This is a six-sided figure, so this is a hexagon. So our hexagon is a regular hexagon. All six sides are congruent to each other, and all six interior angles are congruent to each other. Okay, so now that we have all of this information, we are going to put this to use. So we want to classify the following polygons. We have to determine whether it's equilateral, equiangular, or is it regular, meaning that it's both equilateral and equiangular. Okay, here's our first polygon. So first of all, this is a hexagon, has six sides, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know that this is a hexagon. The only thing that we see is marked are the angles. The angles are all marked congruent. They have only one line here. So we know that it is equiangular. That is all we can say about it. We do not know that it's equilateral. Even though it looks like those sides are, we do not know that those are congruent. They are not marked, so it is not equilateral. Okay, next one. We now have a triangle. And this one's a little tricky. We've got two sides of our triangle that are marked as congruent, but we know that a triangle has three sides. That third side is not marked as congruent, so it is not equilateral. We also see that we have two angles that are marked as congruent, but not this third one up here. So we don't know that it's equal angular either. So we can only say that it's a triangle. That's it. We can't classify it any further at this point. Okay, last example. All right, we got a lot of things going on here. First of all, it's a quadrilateral. Okay, so we see that we've got one, two, three, four. All four sides are marked as congruent. So we know that this is equilateral. Oops, sorry, equilateral, there we go. We have this angle being congruent with this angle up here. 
we have this angle congruent with this angle up here. But this angle is not congruent with this angle or vice versa. This is not congruent here. So we cannot say that this is an equal angular polygon. The only thing that we know is that it's equilateral. So that's it. We're done. All right, one last example for this lesson. We are going to find some dimensions about a polygon. Okay, so we are told that this is a regular polygon. First, let's figure out what type it is. It has one, two, three, four, five sides. So this is a pentagon. We need to find the values of X and Y. So we are told that it's regular, so therefore we know all five sides are in fact congruent to each other. So since we know all five sides are congruent to each other, we can set these two sides equal to each other and solve for x. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got 13x plus 27 equals 3x plus 22. All right, so let's use our algebra and combine like terms. We're going to subtract 3x from both sides. And we're also going to subtract 27 from both sides. So when we do that, we now have 10x equals a negative 5. Divide both sides by 10. x equals negative 1 half. And that's okay that x is negative. That's not our actual length of the segment. That's just what would go into our value here. So if we were to in fact solve for the length of the side, we can plug negative one half in and then solve. But this problem is not asking for us to do that. It just wants us to find the values of x and y. Okay, so we found the value of x. Now we need to find the value of y. Again, we know it's regular. So therefore we know that all of our interior angles are congruent to each other. So when we know that our interior angles are congruent, that means we can set these two angle measures equal to each other. So we have 2y equals y plus 30. All right, we're going to subtract y from both sides, combine like terms, and we get y equals 30. So that is our answer. We're done. Now if we wanted to find the actual measure, we would plug 30 in for y. This one's pretty easy. We could see that our interior angle measure would be 60 degrees here. But we don't have to do that. So we just needed to find the value for y, and we did. Okay, so that is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed your first flip lesson. Definitely want your feedback on this, and hope you guys have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.